you're working on your next project, which happens to be some type of sport-based game. And of course you want your players to be playing the game, but you are missing one important ingredient. You need a crowd who's watching your player play, right? I mean, even when I was a kid and I played football, even then the crowd was always, let's say, at least 10 NPCs. Okay, let's say that the parents just gather to speak and to watch the kids play. So no matter what you are doing, whether in real life or on the virtual life, you always have to show a crowd in some of the type of projects that you run, right? For example, if you're working on a football title or any kind of venue or theaters or concert, it doesn't really matter. At some point in your career, you might face a project where you will need to render crowds. And the problem is pretty simple. If you go above 10 characters in Unity, you will start experimenting sudden drops of performance. And I say 10 as a magic number because, you know, it's a good number, right? But if you go and work on something like mobile or Chromebooks or some shit like that, that will probably start happening at three characters. It is not uncommon to see three to five milliseconds just being spent on the CPU every frame just by having a bunch of characters. So that is a lot of performance use and possibly money. Okay, so you have determined that you might need to render hundreds or even thousands of characters. What can you do about that? Let's explore this, let's go. First thing I want to do is to mention the problems or actually the specific bottlenecks that rendering too many characters will have for your project. So let's talk about that. Two things, skinning and animators. Skinning is a process of assigning vertex positions, basically, depending on how the skeleton of your avatar is, right? So we usually work with skeletons because it allows us for a lot of flexibility when it comes to animations and rigging and all of these things, right? Basically, if I put my bones like this, then the positions of my vertices or the skin have to change, right? According to the rules of the skeleton. This is the process that we call skinning and this is as expensive as hell. Okay. Normally we do this on the CPU, but nowadays it is also possible to do in the GPU as I will show you later on. That is very expensive, remember that. The other thing is that animators are very expensive as well. If you ever use the animator component, looks pretty juicy, right? But it doesn't just scale, right? When you put tons of those, and by tons I mean at least five, you will see that they start sucking your performance budget very quickly, right? It is, like I said, not uncommon to see three milliseconds being spent on just animators. And that increases very quickly if you start adding layers, if you start blending animations and all of these things. So you have to be very careful with these two things, skinning and animators. Those are the main reasons that you cannot really scale the number of characters that you render in real time if your Unity project. Okay, but if I have this video is because there is hope for this, right? Yes, there is. So just before you think that there is a one-click solution for this, no, there is not. Rendering hundreds or even thousands of characters is not easy, okay? But if you really want it, because your project or your users demand it, you can do it, okay? And it's going to point you at the several directions that you can follow in order to accomplish this. In general, there are two main ways to accomplish this. The first one is to use the new dots package called com dot unity dot animation okay so if you quickly search for the com unity animation package you will find that there is not documentation on the manual page at least on the version 0.2 let's see the latest version oh there is not either yeah i mean they are working on this it is preview so give them a break come on man but I have to say that if you're looking for more information about this package, there is a GitHub repository with a lot of samples, right? Both for URP and HDRP. Now, this Unity package is great because it allows you to code your animations in a way that is massively parallelizable. Basically, you can run this in multiple cores and it is great. Okay, it is just again in a preview state, so you do not expect many features to be implemented already for you. 
Okay. This is one example that I show in the Unity Performance Task Force. Okay. Now, the second option is to skip skin mesh renderers altogether because they're expensive, right? The skinning part is expensive. And just go for something else. Okay, this something else might be something like this mesh renderers, or it could also be something like uh, animated sprite atlases, right? So this is all about using tricks. It is not going to be as flexible as using an animator, so it might take you a bit more time to implement, but this is just an option that might work for many situations, right? For sure, I've seen games in the old good Nintendo or Super Nintendo that use this kind of techniques, right? Just put planes with baked information and that also works. Now, if you want to go through the mesh renderers approach, you can do also many things like you can create one specific mesh for each frame of your animation and then swap it in real time. Or you can also do something more advanced, which is, you know, to bake the position of your vertices and encode that into a texture, right? So this is also a different solution, but you know, also the tooling part might take you a bit of time to get right. And on top of this, you also have other types of solutions, you know, which, you know, they are like patches. They're not going to let you skyrocket your performance out of nowhere, but you know, those are important things to consider still. One is to use GPU scanner because the CPU is not great at doing this. So you should always leave it on unless you have like a severe CPU bottleneck, in my opinion, okay? And of course, your target hardware has to support GPU skinning. So the skinning can be done in the GPU and that is very efficient. Also, you can reduce the number of vertices that you have to skin by using LODs, for example, that is also an option. You can also reduce how many bones affect your vertices. Maybe you can drop it to two or even one, although one would look pretty robotic and you do that in the quality settings, right? And you can also just drop the animators all together, like to a table flip and just go back to the old good legacy animation system. So try first the easy things, which is, you know, what I spoke about in the last few seconds, right? The GPU computing skinning and the loads and all of these things. If that doesn't work and then you need to use all the performance budget that you have, because you need to put more than 100 characters. And I would even argue that more than 10 characters would require you to adopt these more complicated measures. If you need to do that, then watch my lesson number 13 of the Unity Performance Task Force, right? In that lesson, I spent a good amount of time, I think about 45 minutes, walking you through the solutions and giving you some concrete examples. But I'm not going to lie to you, this is still a hard topic and it's been a subject of research for many years. So if you really need crowd rendering, you can get it. Just do not expect to find a one-click solution. However, if you join the Unity Performance Task Force, I will be able to save you weeks or even months of work, right? So just click the link below and join the Unity Performance Task Force. Just check the lesson number 14, it's going to be Great if you need crowd rendering. All right, my friends, hope this was useful for you. Let's catch up next week. See you.